Hello and welcome to Jewelry Deconstructed. Uh, my name is Jerry and I would first like to remind you to click the like and subscribe buttons which are just below here uh, and that everything in this video will be available on my blog Jewelry Deconstructed. So go there to the link in the comments and you can find uh, more information. Uh, please also click on my Facebook and Patreon page links. I would appreciate that. I'm going to work off of notes because that's how I work best, so I may pause a couple of times to read something to make sure I'm staying on track. Uh, that's just how I work best. Okay. Uh, this first video is about safety in the jewelry shop, and my desired outcome for you, the viewer, is that you become familiar with the basics of safety uh, in the jewelry shop. Because that will prevent mishaps and uh, injuries. And I'm hoping to teach you to be aware of your surroundings and to work safely. Now this is a short introduction. Uh, so many of the things I will cover uh, are pretty common sense. But it is always worth it to remind you of them. And some things will be new that you may not, may not have thought of before. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below or on my blog. And I will endeavor to get you the best answer I can right away. Now this is going to sound scary to some as I'm talking about things that can hurt you. But trust me, the vast majority of what I'm talking about will probably never happen. You can go decades working in jewelry, getting nothing more than the occasional poke or cut or scrape or little tiny minor, minor burn that literally a band-aid is all you need. Uh, something more ma major is extremely rare uh, so as long as you keep a mind of, about safety you should be good now uh, first a question is there a place for safety in the jewelry shop we're going to leave that for a second while we discuss it that being said i tend to think that safety is your responsibility and nobody else's uh, if you work for somebody else, you don't expect to be injured. You expect your employer to provide a safe work environment for you. That's not unreasonable to think that. Now, the color to that is if you're working for yourself or as a hobbyist, you take the place of the employer. So you are responsible for that uh, safe work environment. So, and that's very important. Now, you share accountability to, to value safe work experiences, either as an employee or as an employer, or working as a hobbyist, uh, to make sure that your environment is a safe one. Now, if you think a task is unsafe or a job is unsafe, stop working. Report the issue or fix it yourself. Uh, but you're responsible to yourself for taking an active role in your own safety. Okay, now Mike Rowe uh, brought up an interesting point on his blog uh, several years ago. Uh, he suggested that safety is not a thing to be ranked, so but rather a state of mind to be applied is needed to a myriad of situations in varying amounts. But if we were to rank it, it would rarely be first. Where safety truly First, no level of risk would ever be encouraged or permitted, and no work would ever get done or play for that matter. And I believe that he is correct. As jewelers, you consistently and constantly participate in a risk-reward balancing uh, system act that is getting the project done that you're working on without injury, even though you're using tools that can cause injury. Uh, he started a conversation about occupational safety, which is continuing to this day about where, how important is safety versus getting the job done and making a profit. And that's something that's an ongoing conversation. And, but to me, that reminds me that safety is ultimately your responsibility, nobody else's. You are responsible for your own safety. So the answer to the earlier question, is there a place for safety in the jewelry shop? The answer is yes, and it is your responsibility. Now, before starting and sitting down at your bench or workspace, look around. Uh, 
just because everything seems okay at first, do not become compliant. Uh, you want to make sure that everything is okay, but when you're compliant, you're not looking around, and that's when accidents happen. So always be aware of what is around you and how you interact with the environment around your bench or workspace. So how do you make sure that you're responsible for your own safety? Well, these are a list of items that I think are important for safety in the jewelry shop in no particular order as I believe all the points are very important. Okay, first, first point is be mentally and physically rested. Physical exhaustion is easy to recognize. After a long day, your hands are tired, uh, your eyes ache, uh, your, your butt hurts from sitting all day. Rest and maybe a long soak in the tub will fix this. Mental exhaustion is harder to recognize. Uh, physical fatigue can have a lot to do with mental exhaustion, uh, more so than you think. Uh, it'll set you back on your heels when the volume of tasks that you have to do every day gets beyond what you can safely and mentally deal with. This isn't just tasks at, at the jewelry bench. This is any task. Accounting, calling people, dealing with your you know, sick brother-in-law. You know, whatever. Uh, mental stuff can pile up and it can cause physical uh, symptoms and burnout. And so you need to make sure that you recognize when you're mentally tired and you need to find a way to take care of that as well as being physically tired. Okay, maintaining your physical work area in a clean and orderly manner. Okay, now if you notice my workbench here, uh, I've got some dust and stuff because I've been working all day. At the end of the day, I'm going to take all of this stuff, put it in the bench, sweep the bench, clean it, get a new piece of paper towel for the files, put them back. That way it's all nice and clean for me to start fresh tomorrow. Uh, it's when you have little stuff sitting around everywhere and just piled up is when uh, accidents happen. You can like step on something, you know, and twist your ankle. You can like uh, put your hand in your tray uh, looking for a tool and uh, stick yourself with a sharp piece of metal or a broken drill bit or something. Make sure your area is clean. Uh, I personally like to, uh, when I come back from lunch, I just put everything away. I hang up all my pliers, I put all the files here, I put all the big files under there, and just use a brush and just quickly sweep everything into the uh, bench uh, tray here. So that way I'm starting fresh at lunch and at the end of the, uh, every morning because I clean at the end of the day as well. So, so make sure it's clean, that it's easier to find something and to make sure that if something is not right with your work environment. Also, it's easier to spot when a tool needs service or when it's not working as well. Okay. Now you want to always wear, maintain, and properly store your personal protective equipment. That's called PPE. And make sure you wear it properly. Okay, at a minimum, eye protection. Uh, glasses like this are sort of okay if you're doing something where you're not making any dust or anything. At the very least, you should get a you can buy little shields that will fit, you know, on the corner of your glasses, and it prevents stuff from going in the sides because it's. Uh, it's very easy to get little bits of metal, little bits of polish, odd things up into your eyes, and it hurts. Trust me, it does. Uh, you can also use glasses that fit over your glasses. I don't like these. I use those uh, because they fit better under my Optivisor. Uh, don't trust your Optivisor, which makes a shield, but don't trust this to keep everything out of your eyes because things still go up under it, especially when you're using a rotary tool of some sort. Uh, after eye protection, and I'm flipping to my next page, um, you want breathing protection. At the very least, you want a, uh, a mask. Uh, I normally recommend a paper mask because at the end of the day, when you're working, you can take it off and just throw it in your sweeps tray and recycle it for the metal that sticks to it, all the dust and everything. 
you'd be surprised at how much it does. Uh, in the era of COVID, it's hard to find those, so I've been using a uh, fabric mask that I just hook over here. Make sure it covers up over my nose, shapes under a little piece of wire. Get one that can shape, goes up under your glasses and under your chin. This will stop 90% of the uh, dust that gets that you would have breathed in. And trust me, breathing in dust, not a good thing for your respiratory system, especially if you do it every day. So make sure you have, at the very least, that. Hearing protection. I don't have it near me because it's over across my shop, but uh, you want some sort of hearing protection for when you're hammering or pounding or working with loud equipment. Uh, a lot of times your ventilation and uh, suction units for polishing make a lot of noise. They're very high decibel. Uh, make sure you have hearing protection. Uh, you might want to get some that you can plug in your um, auxiliary to your cell phone and listen to music while you're working, which is a nice thing to do. You also want skin protection. Uh, at the minimum, if you're working with chemicals, you want like latex or rubber gloves uh, because chemicals can very easily go right into your skin uh, and you can be breathing out the fumes like in seconds. Uh, they can go so fast for some of them or they can burn you or scald you or just, it's not good to have weird chemicals on your skin. Uh, um, so at the very least, some sort of skin protection. Okay, now one thing also, fabric tape. You can buy fabric tape that you can just wrap around your fingers for when you're polishing and doing other stuff. So uh, you can uh, keep your fingers from that because uh, rotary tools can abrade your fingers a little bit. So uh, you can just take those off the end of the day and throw them in your tray and recycle them. Now, one thing you always want uh, to do, next point, is label all of your chemical chemical containers and become familiar with the safety data sheets. If you don't know what a safety data sheet is, look it up. It's very important. This For every product, uh, there's a sheet listing what is in there, what the emergency procedures are for if you get it on your skin, if you get it in your eyes, if you get some in your mouth, uh, what happens when it spills, best way to clean it up get those most manufacturers maintain a web page on their uh, site if they're going to manufacture or sell them these items and you can just download them for free from their websites uh, you want to make sure it's not just chemicals either you want to make sure everything is covered uh, you know if you have stuff like this toothpicks you know q-tips all kinds of stuff you want them covered because it prevents contamination because you don't want to cross-contaminate chemicals because sometimes they do weird things or they lose their efficacy uh, when you do that. So make sure you label everything. Next point, know your evacuation procedures and lo the location of emergency equipment. Basically, if something happens which is rare, uh, you will need to jump up and race, race out of the building. Uh, I've never had to do that before in close to 30 years of doing this, So, but you still need to know this. Uh, you also need to know the location of emergency equipment. Uh, you want to know where the uh, position of your fire extinguisher is, and you should always have one of these. It should be about 10 feet away from your bench, so uh, you can, people tend to jump up and get away from where something happened. That puts you right near the fire extinguisher to use it. I've never had to use one, fingers crossed, I never will. Next point, fire alarms. You want to make sure that when you have a fire alarm on the ceiling that the battery has been changed every six months regardless of whether you think it needs it or not. Brand new battery every six months. Also, I like to get the kind that has uh, the little button that you can turn it off for like five or ten minutes because sometimes when you know you're going to be soldering something and making a little bit of fumes that might get up there, uh, you don't want it going off in the middle of a soldering job. So you want to be able to just turn it off for like five or ten minutes while you're working. Uh, and then it automatically comes back on. Okay, now the next point, which uh, this is fluorescent light, so you can see how it's kind of glaring. 
you always want to work with good lighting. Uh, fluorescent used to be the standard in shops, but nowadays uh, everybody is going to LED lights uh, for several reasons. They're cooler, uh, they're uh, here, they can last up to 40,000 hours, they're more energy efficient, uh, they have less impact on the environment, and they have a better color rendering. I'm not sure what that is, you'll have to look that up. I think that's a something from the lighting industry but what it means is you see things in a in a better color the proper color they're not washed out by the fluorescence so uh, also fluorescence as they age they change color so things get a little more yellow or a little more greenish looking so make sure you use LEDs because they don't change they just last forever uh, well practically forever Next point, always have good ventilation. Uh, when you're working at the bench, you're throwing up dust, you're throwing up you know, fumes from chemicals, fumes from soldering. And you do not want to be breathing that. You want to pull that away from you. At the very least, a small fan uh, for blowing or pulling air past your face and away from you. Uh, that will help keep you from breathing in a lot of stuff. Uh, I normally have a ventilation system here for when I'm working on my bench that pulls uh, the dust and stuff into a vacuum. Uh, I won't be using that when I do my demos because it really takes up a lot of room and it's hard to see what I'm doing when I'm working with it. But you do want some sort of ventilation uh, at all times. Preferably something that vents outside. When I'm soldering or casting uh, those areas of my shop do already have outside ventilation so you need to make sure that you have at least some sort of ventilation because you need to take care of your lungs especially uh, in this era of COVID because if you have any problems with your lungs you're more susceptible to having a severe case. Now the next point is is probably not real obvious but only wear natural fiber clothing. See, natural fibers like cotton and stuff, when something hot hits it or a stain or a chemical, it's less likely to make it through to your skin. Uh, hot items tend to hit and then roll off of natural fibers because it'll scorch them and they fall off. Synthetic fibers, especially when you're soldering, things will hit and then stick. It'll melt into the fiber and then you've got this little piece of hot metal uh, stuck to your chest burning through your clothing and that is never any fun. Trust me on that one, been there. Okay, uh, you, after the natural fiber clothing, you also want to wear a good comfortable set of closed toe shoes. Uh, something comfortable that you can work in because Murphy's Law pretty much states that as soon as you drop something sharp, it's going to land point down in your foot. Uh, or on a toe or something. You don't want that. And also, uh, sometimes you're dropping little bits of uh, metal that have sharp points and stuff. You don't want those hitting your feet and you don't want to be stepping on those. So make sure you wear comfortable shoes that you can wear all day and uh, get up and be comfortable in because it also helps with your back and leg pain if you have issues with that. Now this one also doesn't tend to be something that most people would think about. If you have long hair, you need to tie it back. Uh, either tie it back into a ponytail or up into a bun while you're working. Because rotary tools, this one's pretty small. It'll just jerk up and get messed up. But uh, things like buffers and polishers can literally grab your hair and yank your head down into the spindle in less than a second. Make sure that you have your hair tied back because at, at worst, we want you to lose a little bit of hair and, it, you know, but it can get, you can also lose uh, pieces of scalp, which I have seen one person do uh, because they, she did not tie back her hair. And it can also, with that sudden jerk, it can cause neck problems and you do not want that. So make sure you tie back your hair. 
Also, you want to buy a comfortable chair. Uh, this one's a little loud because it's getting old, but it's a comfortable chair where I can sit with my feet flat and my legs are horizontal to the ground, my thighs. That's how you want to sit. Uh, you want something that's going to support the small of your back. You can have handles on the side or not. I prefer not. Uh, that's variable. But you want something that's comfortable to sit in for extended periods. Excuse me. Because you will be at the bench for many, many hours or at your workspace for at least an hour, two hours or more. Uh, also, you need to have a good working height. Uh, for me, a good working height is when I'm, I stick my arms out. Uh, the tabletop is armpit height. That's a good height for me uh, because that puts my chin right here. And if you notice, no, I'm not like bending down to see it. I can see everything very nicely with just a very slight tilt of my head. I can get to all my tools. So it's like this is about as much as I ever move from my head, unless I'm looking for file or something underneath. Uh, now if my bench was higher, I'd be looking at stuff like this, and I'd be stretching my head up. If I was sitting taller, well, much taller, I'd be constantly bent over. And you don't want that either, because that's going to mess up your back. So. About armpit height is where I, I suggest you put it. So, if you can, if you're working off a kitchen table or another temporary surface like that, uh, you may not be able to adjust the height of your bench. Uh, what you do then is just make sure you get up and take five minutes to walk around and stretch every hour. Okay. So, now also. If this bench is not the right height for you when you're sitting, uh, you can take some 4x4 four four blocks uh, and cut them to the right height to give you whatever added height that you need to get this to armpit height. So, now um, another thing which I touched on before with chemicals, but make sure you have covers on everything. Trash, chemicals, parts, tools, all of these should be covered. Uh, keeps things from being contaminated with chemicals, keeps things from being spilled, and when you pop a gemstone, when you're picking up a gemstone from tweezers like this, and you pop them, or a finding gets popped, or gets dropped, it's less likely to end up in a container that you have to search in. It's going to be either on the floor or in your tray or somewhere on your bench much easier to find it. Okay. Now, uh, also, have a basic skill cleanup kit in your shop. A basic kit will include a roll of paper towels to mop up spills, a container of baking soda, like Arm & Hammer, the little yellow boxes, to neutralize anything that might be acidic or like any acids that you might spill. And also, uh, my favorite, I'll keep this around, a bag of uh, kitty litter, just regular old clay, unscented clay kitty litter, 10 pound bag. If something liquid spills, throw that down. It keeps it from spreading uh, and it soaks it up and it neutralizes it to a small degree because it's clay. I'm not sure of the exact pH, but I believe it does neutralize stuff a little bit. Uh, so it's easier to clean up a little amount of wet clay than a big wet spot. Uh, with other stuff. So, and also, always have a first aid kit. Now, do I really need to explain why this is needed? Uh, if you're like most people, you want to get a small one that's usually enough, you know, like the little tiny ones. Me, I am a klutz, so I go for like the super large ones and I end up having to restock it on a regular basis. But that's because I'm a klutz. So, but honestly, do I really need to go further about why you need a first aid kit? It's, you know, that's kind of a given. Now also the last thing, which is not something a lot of people think about, is make sure everything that is electrical is grounded properly. Uh, you want to use ground fault interrupt uh, GFI outlets whenever possible. Uh, every cord on everything should be inspected 
uh, at least every six months to make sure that there's no nicks, no cuts, no worn spots, no uh, spots where the cords melted or were melted by something outside. Make sure that everything is properly grounded with a three-prong plug uh, because you're working with metallic dust. It will cause shorts and fires if it, if it gets sifted into a plug for, on a regular basis. It can build up and cause a short. So make sure everything is grounded properly. Now, that's pretty much everything I've got. Uh, so, I'm gonna, last reminders, you're going to be making jewelry. You're going to be working with rotary tools, large and small. Uh, also, uh, files, torches, blades, chemicals, hammers, heavy steel mandrels and stuff. And you'll bump into things. I don't know how many times I've smacked my head on on my uh, bench pin because I bent down to pick something off the floor and just nailed the bench pin coming up. Uh, it's going to happen. Now, you will at some point get burned, sliced, poked. That's just how it goes. You're making jewelry, you're working with tools, you're working with sharp objects, you're working with heavy objects, you're working with flames. It just happens. Chances are, it'll, all you'll need is a Band-Aid, maybe, you know, you know, maybe two Band-Aids. To need to go to the hospital or doctor and get a stitch or two, extremely rare extremely rare uh, anything more than that you hear stories from people and stuff but for the most part it's ex that's one of those rare things that people tell stories about I know somebody who would this happen to uh, it's almost never somebody you know so make sure that you stay safe uh, you look around and remember that safety is your responsibility now, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or email me at the email link below uh, or go to my blog and comment there. And I will try to get the answers to you. Remember to hit uh, like and subscribe and I will see you with the next video. Thank you very much.